I've scoured far and wide, River, high and low, under and over the trenches of the video game world to find the most bizarre, the weirdest, the strangest video games Gaming Dumb has to offer. And I've yet to find the one that claims the title of the weirdest of them all. I can't do it, River. I, I, I can't do it. No game has that pull or that allure that I'm looking for. It's... Nothing has drawn me in yet. <sighs> I may as well just retire my channel. No one has seen me for a year, so... Who cares? <sighs> Ew. What? Ew. Snood? No. no R River, I'm telling you. It's not enough. Nothing is enough. I mean... I guess I could still try it? Alright, how you doing? So essentially what we got is a tile matching game in the same vein of Puzzle Bobble or Bust Move in North America. It's just so bizarre. What what is a snood? You just shoot these weird, creepy, ugly faces at other creepy, weird, ugly faces and the music is so monotonous. It's not horrible though. It plays fine for a GBA game. It's a good time waster puzzle. But it's no Frogger's Adventure Temple of the Frog. And let me tell you. Whew. Stop! We've been over this river. It's not just an adventure game. It's a puzzle adventure game. So, yes, Snoot is bizarre, it's obtuse, it's obscure, but it's not the weird or wacky that I'm looking for. I mean, but as a bonus, for you, those of you fine connoisseurs of video game obscurity with the fine taste, crave more Snood GBA, you're in luck. I have Snood 2 on vacation. Yes, they made a sequel to Snood on GBA, and though there isn't a fine, All right, how you doing? it sends you through the world at different locations, freeing Snoods, touring with Snoods. <sighs> These games are obscure and weird, but I'm still not convinced that they deserve the strong award of weirdness. <sighs> Look. River. There's a ton of amazing, fantastic games out there that not a lot of people know about, and it's our job to separate the germs from the gems. <sighs> I mean, I have all these great games, and I want to share them with everybody. I mean, but what? Keith Courage. <sighs> Keith Courage in Alpha Zone. Who ever heard of video games on a card? Probably one of the more sought after video game consoles amongst collectors. Through the collaboration of Hudson Soft and NEC, we got the TurboGrafx 16. The Japanese PC Engine came out in 1987, though two years later the TurboGrafx 16 made its debut in the States in August of 1989, making it the unofficial first 16 bit console of the generation. I say unofficial because the TurboGrafx still used an 8-bit CPU but a 16-bit graphics processor and was criticized for that. Some even called it controversial because of its deceptive bit-width marketing strategy. The same thing the Atari Dragar was criticized for being a 64-bit console. Though the TG-16 was under severe competition against the Genesis and the Super Nintendo, many fans say it had a ton of worthwhile games that many of us Nintendo or Sega fans missed out on. Keith Courage is actually a game based off of the Japan-only Mashin or Masin Hero Wataru or Spirit Hero Wataru and was the pack and title for All Turbo Graphics 16. Let's take a look. How you like that? Another game slash console checked off the list. It's a standard platformer, 
could you imagine you getting this for Christmas and you one of your buddies got like a Super Nintendo with Super Mario World or Sega Genesis with Sonic the Hedgehog? This is actually pretty cool. I mean, the last level with the little boy is kind of whack, but this reminds me a lot of Cheeky Cheeky Boys. By the way, those are the bad guys. And I mean like, B-A-B guys. Beastly alien dudes. That's it! I'm convinced there are still some fantastically wild and bizarre games out there. I just need to keep looking. Yes, this is it. <clears throat> this is the kind of game that I've been looking for. River, River, I found it. Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. Just look at that art. It's got a stupid looking orange boy in overalls, a blueberry looking dude in a green onesie, and that's, yep, that's Princess Tomato. And a lima bean knight. But the most important thing on this label, the bean. Yep, developed by Hudson Soft in 1984 and then ported to the NES in 91, Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom is a pretty cute text adventure with admittedly good art and really, really good music too. So, without further ado, but with anthropomorphic vegetables, Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. The game starts off with a little intro about how the sinister Minister Pumpkin kidnapped the daughter of King Broccoli and it's up to us, as Sir Cucumber, to rescue the Princess Tomato and defeat the Minister and reclaim the stolen emblem. Immediately we're greeted with a very warm and homey scene of the countryside with actually some really very good music. You guys know that these warm and homey type games are my jam. They remind me a lot of uh, Link's Awakening. So the way the game plays is a very simple text adventure with some options that allow you to interact with the world ahead of you. We have the option to move, look, check, take, talk, p p purse, Percy. Who's Percy? I don't know. You tell me. Hi, welcome to Gabe Stravaganza. How may I help you? Hey, how you doing? Uh, Percy? Who's Percy? Your name. It, it's on. It's on your ta tag. It's it says it says Percy. But continuing on, we encounter a baby choking persimmon that we can't really do anything with. I try hitting him, but that doesn't amount to anything unless we attempt to speak to him, in which case he reveals that he's thirsty. At this time, I want to take some time and appreciate some of the art from the game. You know, my favorite being the first scene in the countryside. I don't know. I don't know. I like that kind of stuff. And the music is actually really good, too. Once I finished the game, I actually found myself humming some of the tunes. The game utilizes a password function to continue your adventure should you find the need to stop for a bit, and the password screen music is pretty dang good too. The composer for Princess Tomato is Tomotsune Maeno, who did the music for another little known game called Earthlight. Also by Hudson Soft. Anyway, we can continue onto the lake and draw some water for the baby persimmon and return to give it to him. Turns out he was abducted by the minister's farmies and had deprived their captives of water. Farmies. Farmies. I mean, that's better than anything I could have come up with. The... The marine crops. As you progress with Percy now at your side, forever indebted to you, you come across an eclectic cast of characters from a hermit corn man to freaking human beings. 
Yes, in the land of veggies, some of the characters are humans, dude. Lisa, a member of the Resistance in their plot to rescue the Princess Peach, claims she's Princess Tomato's freaking sister. Like, what? There was actually these really tough first-person maze-like sections that had me stumped for a while. The graphical power of the NES did not help it in these sections either, since all the corridors look the same, all the hallways look the same, the tunnels. Even though I really like the game and greatly appreciate what Hudson Soft did with the limitations of the NES, there is one part of the game that I found very, very unnecessary. Combat. Well, not like hand-to-hand -hand fisticuffs combat. Even though Sir Cucumber is holding a freaking sword on the box art, it's more like rock, paper, scissors? It's called Finger Wars, and the concept of the game was first you play a rock, paper, scissors game, and whoever wins that round of rock, paper, scissors, the winner then has to guess which direction the opponent is going to be facing? I don't know, it was really weird, and unnecessary. What I mean by unnecessary is after confronting the minister and learning that his son is the true mastermind, you fight Pumpkin Jr. at the end and learn that while many of the enemies you fought prior to this engagement have set patterns, some enemies will always look one way or will always throw paper. Pumpkin Jr. is completely random. Watch. The full time of that fight was literally about 3 minutes and all I did was press one direction the entire time. In the end, you defeat Minister Pumpkin and his evil farmies and live happily ever after married to Princess Tomato. The end. With great music, cute visuals, and a goofy cast of characters, Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom is a game I can recommend to any fan. I mean, you ride around in a giant robot and fight other veggies and robots. <laughs> like, what? I liked it. I really, really liked it, and I think this is definitely a top contender for one of the bizarre, strangest hidden gems in all of gaming though. I love these hidden and obscure games, and those ones that just like stand out among the rest. I think I may have found my niche when doing videos. Yes, I love video games as a whole, and with all my heart I will love video games forever, but I want the world to know about the lesser known games that get passed over, whether they be good or bad, fun or funny. I want to show these games the love they deserve. And until next time, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you later.